Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing something a little bit different. I've had a few requests to show you different things that I eat on a normal basis. So I want to show you guys something that I've been trying out for the last few months and that is bone broth. This video shouldn't be that long because this is so simple to prep. The only thing that takes long is just waiting for the bone broth to stew. So this is something that you can do overnight in a crock pot or you can leave it in your pan. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I do it. So as you can see, my bone does have like a little bit of meat still on it. That's okay. But what I like to do after I rinse it off and clean it, I just put it in a pan like so. I like to line mine with parchment paper or aluminum foil because it makes it easier to clean after this is over. But I like to preheat my oven on 400 or 425 degrees. And I like to let my bone actually roast a little bit so that I can go ahead and start pulling the marrow out of the bone. So I usually do that for like 15, 20 minutes, just depending on how big of a hurry I'm in. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that into the oven and then I'll show you guys how I prep the veggies. What? So what you put in your bone broth is completely up to you. Some people don't put anything in it. Personally, I like to jazz mine up a little bit. So I love putting fresh carrots, celery, um, I love garlic and then I also have onion in the fridge that I'm going to get out as well. I love to put different things like that in my bone broth. So I'm just going to tell you a little about bone broth while I prep these veggies. Okay guys, so this is what my bone is looking like. My oven is now on 400. So I'm going to go ahead and just pop this in the oven. And I'll just let it stay in about 20 minutes, maybe just while I'm prepping the veggies. Okay, so first thing you might be wondering is what is bone broth? And really bone broth is literally what it sounds like. You literally just roast the bones over water with veggies, whatever you would like or by itself. And then you just drink it and it has so many good benefits for your body. Some of the benefits that people talk about a lot with bone broth is that it helps their skin, it helps their bones, their joints, it helps with your gut health. So it's really one of those superfoods that's really cheap and really easy to make. Um, I know there's store-bought ones, but I've actually never purchased bone broth. Now I know there's people who have and there's nothing wrong with that. I would just say if you want to purchase it, make sure that you're getting a good brand. I like to make it myself because I know exactly what's going in it. When I make my bone broth, I do not add any seasonings or anything, but before I'm ready to eat, then I'll add my seasonings separately. So I add it to each cup instead of just putting it all in the bone broth. Now, I probably should not have just sliced up the leaf part. I've never put that in my bone broth before, so now I'm over here picking out the pieces. Um, so if you're at home, please make sure to not chop up your celery with these little leaf parts on, unless you want that in your bone broth. That's completely up to you. So another reason why you might want to drink bone broth is because it is so rich in your minerals, such as phosphorus, calcium, magnesium. Now, maybe if you have a condition and your doctor has told you to avoid or limit your use of that, definitely consult with them first. But this drink would just be so, so, so good. And I do refer to it as a drink because I usually put it in a mug and then I'll just kind of, you know, spoon it out and drink it like that. But it is so good to me. So another reason why you should drink bone broth, if I haven't convinced you already, is that it contains glucosamine and collagen. Now, glucosamine is really good for helping with joint issues, joint health. So honestly, if you could just get that in something that you can drink that's also going to benefit your skin, why not? It also has collagen, so collagen is going to help your skin, your bones, your joints. So it's like with bone broth, you really don't have, you know, anything to lose, but I'm not here to, you know, force you onto anything, but I definitely encourage you to try it because this is different and it can really help you, especially if you don't have any type of restrictions from your doctor or any medical conditions that you might need to consult with your doctor. Okay. Also, I just want to add that 
all of these veggies that I'm cutting up, I like to cut them in smaller pieces because I like to eat them while I'm drinking the broth. As far as bone broth, you know, if you're not convinced, you know, you can always do more research. Before I started using bone broth, I did research and I watched different videos on YouTube about it, listening to different medical professionals talk about it as well. Personally, I just did it for my gut health and my skin health, but I learned more about, you know, how it can help with cardiovascular health, brain health, and different things like that as well. So if you want to learn a little bit more, I'll definitely make sure that I link some of the videos that I watch that, you know, really dig into a deeper level of explaining it. If you just want something that's going to help with your joints, your skin, your nails, your gut health, this is definitely still for you. But I'm gonna go ahead and finish prepping up these veggies. Now, I don't know if I've told you guys this before, but I am a lover of garlic, so I mean, I don't know if there really is a limit to the amount of garlic that I could put in something because I just love it so much. I have like four cloves already here. Then I have a bowl of garlic here as well. So let me go ahead and get that prepped and then I'll be back. Okay, so I went ahead and prepped some of the garlic. I'll probably do more later on because I'm not gonna put it in right now. But let's go ahead and get into the onion. I usually only use one onion, but since I had some leftover white onion in my fridge from making sandwiches, I'm just gonna go ahead and give that a rough chop so that I can also put that into our bone broth. I am such a lover of garlic and onions and I just feel like it adds good flavor naturally to anything that you're cooking. So I literally almost always have garlic and onions on hand. My camera battery is dying, so this is a good time for me to go ahead and pause, switch batteries and everything, and then I'll show you guys what we're gonna do with the bone because it looks like it's about done. But this is how the bone looks after everything has roasted. And you can kind of see there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and place it in my crock pot. I did decide to go ahead and use my crock pot only because I do have to be up really early and it's almost eight o'clock so I do want to make sure I get in bed at a good time and I don't want to have to try to stay up with this all night so I'm just going to let it simmer overnight and this is really good because I'll be able to tell you guys the difference like is there any difference in me letting it simmer for 12 hours in a crock pot or doing eight hours on the stove so let me go ahead and get some water so I can pour over this and then we'll get back into everything. Shout out to my mom for even giving me this crock pot when I moved when I moved out like several years ago, I still have it and I told you I was going to use it. So I'm using it. But also I have this pitcher of water because crock pots get really heavy once you start loading them up with stuff. And I'm trying to do this and be mess free, but let's see how that's working for us. And I just want to make sure that I cover my bone completely. So I'm going to bring you guys a little bit closer so you can see what's going on. All right, so as you can see, the bone is completely submerged now, and I'm so excited because this is going to make a good amount. You can also see like these little, little bubbles, and this is from oil. So one thing I will tell you is that after you get your bone broth thoroughly cooked, sometimes I like to let it cool, and then I skim off the little fat that when it solidifies, so that way I'm not drinking a lot of you know fat and stuff like that. But you can do as you please but that's just my personal preference and that's what I do. Okay guys, so that is all for now. As you can see, I went ahead and just put my crock pot on my stove, it's plugged in, only because I'm just one of those people that get paranoid about stuff catching on fire or getting too hot. And I am really excited about this bone broth, you guys, and I know it's gonna be so, so good. And I'll make sure that I show you guys the rest of the steps, no matter if I have to record with my phone and then upload the clips into clips into this video I definitely want you guys to see this so that you can experience something like this because it is so good but I'll come back when it's done and we'll go through everything we'll try it together and I'll show you guys how I season it for each dose and I'll also show you guys how I plan on storing it this time it is currently 9:48. I'm getting ready to go to bed you guys it's on high I'm gonna go ahead and swap it to low so it's been on high for about two hours now and this is all that it has done so it definitely seems like it's cooking way slower 
I mean, it is a slow cooker, so of course that's the point. But if you do this on the stove, you would definitely have more by now. All right, you guys, so it is 5.23 the next day. All right, and this is how the bone broth is looking. So now you can definitely tell it looks different than it did yesterday before we went to bed. I'm just gonna grab a spoon and you can kind of see like this layer of oil that's built up. So when I let it cool later, um, I'll definitely pull that off. But this is how the bone looks now. So you can definitely see like the difference, you know, in the color. Well, it is 525. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just add all of the veggies that we prepped. You see, it was so good that we went ahead and prepped everything ahead of time. Because now we don't really have to worry about chopping everything, especially since it's five o'clock in the morning. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try to fit in as much as I can. And then I'm just gonna turn it back on high and just let this simmer some more. So you guys, I'm getting ready to go to work. I'm going to actually turn off the crock pot because I don't want to leave it on all day while I'm gone. So when I get back today, I'll go ahead, I'll pop it back in and then I'll show you guys the rest of the process. Hey guys, it's Brianna, welcome back. I am home from work, so let's go ahead and get into this bone broth. I did let it sit in the fridge while I was away at work. So this is what we're working with now. It's been about 10 hours since I had it in the refrigerator. So I'm gonna just show you guys up close what it looks like. So as you can see, the fat on top has hardened. So I like to remove that because if not, when you heat this up, then all you're gonna do is have, you know, fat in your bone broth. And I mean, if you're okay with that, that's fine. You're still going to get some fat. This is not going to get rid of everything, but I like to go ahead and remove these fat pieces. It's kind of crazy because I put so many onions and the onions are actually stuck in the fat, but there's a lot of onions. So I'll just go ahead and get rid of that. You'll get little pieces that look like this or little dots. You can get rid of as many of those as you like or leave them in. Sometimes I'll leave them in because I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, you do need some fat in your body. So this is kind of how it's looking. I hope you guys can see this. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in the crock pot. I just want everything to heat through all the way. And then I will show you guys the last step, which is how I prepare and how I drink and eat the bone broth. Okay guys, so the bone broth is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and just fill up my little mug here and then I'll show you how I season everything. But everything is hot and ready, so let's go ahead. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour this up and I also want to show you guys how I store it. Okay, so have my bone broth, everything is in the cup. This is what I usually use. First, I'll just add in some salt. Then you want to do a few cracks of black pepper however much you like, but you know black pepper can get pretty spicy. And then I also like to add in a turmeric powder. I just love adding this in to my bone broth. And I like the color that it gives it as well, so it doesn't just have that weird tinge. I just like this golden color. And you know, turmeric is just really, really good for you. It has anti-inflammatory properties as well. It can also help with joints and inflammation. So why not have that extra boost in here? Right, and now that I have my bone broth seasoned and ready, I just drink it through a straw. This is so good. Some people might want to add like garlic powder, onion powder different things like that. If you want to, I would just say add a little bit and taste as you go. Sometimes if I really want to jazz it up, I will put a little bit of this adobo seasoning, but I would not recommend putting the pepper and the salt in if you're going to do that, especially salt with this because, because adobo can get spicy, but it can kind of help change the flavors. And you know, you don't have to add the same seasonings every day when you drink this. You can kind of just add as you go, and that's just the beauty of this. Another thing that I'm pretty sure someone will want to ask or want to know is how often I drink it. So whenever I make my bone broth, I literally eat maybe one or two bowls a day or maybe a cup. 
per day until it's all gone and then I don't make it again until I just get in that mood where I feel like I need the bone broth to help with my gut health or to help with my skin and then I continue so on. there's no way that I can actually lift this crock pot to pour into every mason jar so I have a towel down here in case I spill and I'm just going to use my Pyrex oh my gosh you can be careful because it's really hot still and I'm just going to fill up each of my mason jars then also if you have a bone and you left the meat on be careful unless you actually want the meat um, make sure to scoop that out before or else it'll end up eating. and you know what I never do it this way but I think I might start because it'll be so much quicker for me to have individualized serving sizes and then if you want you can go ahead and add your seasoning so then when you get ready to either pop it on the stove to reheat it or pop it in the microwave if you're in a hurry this will go by so much quicker for you all right you guys so I got a total of seven mason jars full of bone broth so that is a good amount really enough for every day of the week i hope that you guys enjoyed the process of me making this and me bringing you along i really hope that you try this recipe out let me know if you do let me know if you've tried bone broth and how it works for you and if you've noticed any benefits and i can't wait to see you guys in the next video let me know what you guys would like to see next